2015. We hope everybody had a fantastic holiday season and a very happy new year. We are very excited to be back. We're moving into our third year, which I think is pretty incredible for Miss Stephanie's house. And we're very excited about it. Um, so one of the things I started out this year, I think that I actually solved one of the biggest mysteries of the 20th century. We're in the 21st century now, but in the 20th century before, I had a thought one day. There is a place, they say, right, that you can check in anytime you want, but you can never leave. And I think I figured out where that place is. Do you guys know where that place is? Tanya, do you know where that place is? I'm going to tell you where that place is. It's Facebook. <laughs> Facebook is Hotel California. So blowing portals in people's mind, that is the place. You know, we broke that down, right? That is, yeah. we figured that out. So Amen. you guys can just sit tight. Now the rest of the year should just roll along just fine. Preach, girl. I know, right? It's like, I want to get off so bad. Sometimes I feel like, I, you know, I take these periods of time off of Facebook. And then I feel like when I get back, I should be like checking in just to let people know, you know, that I'm alive, I'm here. Yeah. But I can't like fully like get off there because then I still, you know, I want to stop a couple people. So I can't, you know, fully <laughs> disconnect all the way. But uh, it is, that is the Hotel California. Glen Fry and, um, oh my God, what's the other guy's name in The Eagles? Don Henley, two of my favorite songwriters. They were like, yes, it's not really a real place. It is a real place, it's Facebook. <laughs> so we figured it out. So, um, I also want to say, like, we're starting to start, we, have, we have a venue now, which is amazing. The only thing I don't like about moving to a venue now is um, having to wear shoes. Because we have to wear shoes now in the venues. Like, when we were doing this from our secret location, um, we didn't have to wear, nobody was allowed to wear shoes in the house. In fact, people that made it even so far as to the bed after it was set up weren't even allowed to wear pants, but that's another story. <laughs> Um, so, um, but if you don't want to wear pants, you actually are in luck today if you're here in New York because today is the no pants subway ride. So you guys can leave here, take your pants off, take your pants, yeah, see, there you go, go ahead, run. take your pants off and then get on the train. So, um, anyway, we are starting off with Rockets, um, this year. A very awesome show for you today. I am very excited and very honored to welcome back um, not only one of my good friends, but one of my very favorite performers, um, and a big power, she is a powerhouse, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Jessica Delfino, let me just tell you a little bit about her, she is the hardest working woman in the business. That is true. She is a critically acclaimed and award-winning comedic musician who has performed all over the world. The Village Voice calls her Lower East Side's Queen of the Obscene, and she's been a finalist in the prestigious Andy Kaufman Awards and is the creator of the New York Funny Songs Festival, going into its third year. She is everywhere, so check her out. So you guys, please put your hands together and give a very warm welcome for Jessica Delfino. Oh, you, got, you gotta love that one. Is this my mic? Am I gonna use oh, this Oh, yes, one? I can get this out of the way for okay. Hi everyone. Hi. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. What a year it's been, huh? 2014. It was a good year. It was, it was, a, it was a fun year. Uh, I had a couple New Year's resolutions. Anyone else? Anyone else? I don't make them anymore. No? Uh, Why is that, Stephanie? Because I try to improve my life every day. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> aren't you special? <laughs> um, that must be nice. I actually did set a couple resolutions. I was hoping this year maybe I could lose 20 pounds. Okay, and I know that, see, well, maybe, I don't, see, I don't think I'm fat or anything like that, but I'm just, I think it would be so cool just to have my girlfriends coming up to me and being like, oh my God, you are so skinny. Are you okay? You know, yes. like asking me, like, they're like sure. because, you know, if you lose a couple pounds, your friends don't really notice it, but if you lose 20 pounds, everyone is talking about it. You know, exactly. everybody, everyone is <laughs> like, away. And I'll tell you what, um, I love pound cake, so that's probably not going to happen. Okay? Quarter pound um, cake, maybe you should move down to that. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. A pound cake is so good. Um, so I am 38 years old this year. And I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very, I feel very good in my age. I do. I don't feel old. I don't feel bad about being 38. As a matter of fact, there's sort of a special secret power or strength, I think, that comes with, you know, getting older. Like, for example, as a 38-year-old woman, none of my friends are going to ask me for eggs. 
Like, that's never going to happen. <laughs> I'm not going to have to worry about ever again. My mom has pretty much given up on asking me for grandkids. She's like, I know the statistics. <laughs> you don't have to tell me. Oh. Oh, gosh. But I do have a cat, so that's fun, you know? I have a cat. I did, however, give my cat a human name, though, just so there's no mistaking. You know, so there's no part of me that's like, maybe this is my child. <laughs> well, maybe I'll rock it like a little baby. You know? could walk it. On maybe I'll breastfeed it. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, that would be gross. <laughs> I got into a fight with my husband recently. I did. Um, I got okay, fine, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what happened. <laughs> I didn't want to talk about it. It's kind of personal. But now I'll, I'll tell you guys. Right, good evening. Tell the world. Um, we got into a little argument because... One of us wants to continue enjoying life and having fun and staying out late and just, you know, enjoying all the world has to offer. And one of us wants to be a mother. <laughs> Alex. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, anyway. Guys, I have some songs to play for, for you. I have some songs. Awesome. This is a, a song of my new album called... Songs to make war to. 14 anarchist anthems for the whole family. Yes. And this song is about riding your bicycle around New York City, which is something I do quite a bit. Something that house people can do. Awesome. Any bike riders tonight in the house? All right, all right, okay. All right. So this song is about my experiences riding my bicycle around New York City. It goes like this. you know, what it's like to live here in New York City. This is a song about, um, this is a song about uh, being, um, being in, be, this is a song about living in New York City. This is what's happening. We, we were actually just talking about this. Um, some of us are complaining because uh, the city is changing a lot. You know, places that we love are closing, going out of business, just getting shut down, sometimes with no warning by people with more money. 
or, or by people with corporations uh, you know, behind them or what have you. Things are just changing. And uh, so I'm, um, I'm, in an, I'm in a weird position because I'm kind of on both sides of the issue. And I'll explain what I mean in the form of song. And no one even cares a bit, it's like a story in a book I'd like to help, but I must confess Every time I buy a latte, I'm just adding to the mess I'm a hipster, and I'm gentrifying this town I'm just a hipster, and I'm gentrifying this old town The graffiti on the wall, expressionism shared by gangs There's barely any more at all, it's all just ads from P.F. Chang's and I'm contributing by stepping out, but no one understands. I'm not dressing up in character. This is really who I am. I'm a hipster, and I'm gentrifying this old town. I'm just a hipster, and I'm gentrifying this old town. Landlords are happy because they know kids will pay the high price to not have to go to a neighborhood that's urban. That's code for anyone who's dark or wearing a turban. Some call it inflation or supply and demand, but it's more likely greed and it's getting out of hand when the quarter bodega sells gourmet food for cats and the dick suck place on the corner used to be rated in Zagat. <laughs> oh, wait, I messed that up. And the place on the corner is now, the wait. dick suck place on the corner is now rated in Zagat. So yes. Because it's changed. <laughs> Get it? <'Cause> it <laughs> Reimagining the ways they turn dumpsters into nightclubs with their cool inventive taste. Hey, you know what? I went to art school, so I tell me I belong. I wear urban outfitters, clothes, and white girl up in my songs. I'm a hipster, and I'm gentrifying this old town. I'm just a hipster, and I'm gentrifying this old town. Song that I'll do for now, and um, this is kind of a this is a thinker, I guess, or I don't know. It's kind of a political song. It's called "Questions," some political in nature, and it goes like this: What makes the stars all twinkle and shine? What's the difference between a pancake and a crepe? What makes Ryan Gosling so very damn fine? And what's a legitimate rape? <laughs> and how do these clueless officials get elected to office? Conundrums like this, they amaze and astound. Oh, the world is a wondrous, mysterious place. Whoops, so many questions abound. What makes the stuff in frogs' asses make you trip? What's the difference between a bodega and a store? <laughs> Why can't the word vagina be said aloud on the Michigan State House floor? And why are these Republican men so concerned with what happens in on and around? Part that their God gave us. I'm really blowing those bar chords, aren't I? So many questions abound. Last verse, you guys. I think it's neat when folks worship spirits. It's goth and it's hip, and that's cool. But there's quite a difference between being holy and having a hole to tend to. And what makes the northern lights work in the hemisphere? And why does lightning make a sound? Oh, the world is a wondrous, mysterious place. <laughs> Questions about <laughs> what?
Whoops. <laughs> thank you. Um, <clears throat> this is my second time playing the guitar, so thank you guys for being patient with me. And um, last week. And yeah. Okay, that's it for me. Thank you. We'll take some from the audience, and if you people um, out there in the interworlds, if you have questions for Jessica, you can um, tweet us. We are manning that, so you can ask us. Mm -hmm. Ms. We will ask Stephanie or Ms. Stephanie Rocks or mm -hmm. Ms. Stephanie. Rocks. The only way to me is through Stephanie. So only, you can only find my. Yeah. That's uh, it's pretty. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So first of all, um, I do want to let everybody know, and especially people out in California, you're going out to LA. I am. I'm going to LA on the 18th, and I will be there until the 23rd. Yeah. Nice. So and are you just going to be in LA, or are you going to be? Um, I'm going to just be in LA. Okay. And I love going to LA. I, I'm one of those weird people who loves LA. Everyone you talk to in New York is like, fuck LA. I hate LA. Like everyone hates LA, but I'm like, LA, LA. <laughs> like, I love it. I love going out there. I love, I stay in Hollywood every time I go with one of my friends who lives there. And, um, I love going to Mount Hollywood yes. and walking up the hills and just looking and being like my kingdom, you know, and just, yeah, it's awesome. Do you think you like it so much because you know you're coming back here? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's I, I love LA too. I don't think I could live there, but yeah. I love going there. And then, like, everyone's like, oh, the traffic. I'm like, oh, yeah, why well, don't schedule anything when I have to sit in? Exactly. I mean, and, but I actually kind of like sitting in the car. There's a part of me that I love listening to the radio. Yes, and singing. And singing right, to the radio. It's too. something I don't really get to do that much in, you know, in New York. Car jacking and all that. Yeah. Stuff. I can't do that here. It's yeah. so hard. <laughs> Um, so I love that. I love, um, and I also I love the warm weather. I really am like an iguana. I just love sitting and baking in the sun and swimming. I'm a dolphin. I'm a, yes. I'm a dolphin iguana. So yeah. A dolphin iguana. I love it. <laughs> um, so this time now, I don't know if anybody here, if maybe some of you know this, the Ebola scare that was a few months ago. Oh, she had to go out to LA. She actually wore a hazmat suit on the plane. Yeah, I mean, I did. so did you? You like left your house in this? First of all, where'd you get the suit? I ordered it on Amazon.com. <laughs> Good to know, in case you need them, that's where yeah. you can get them. And they were, it was not expensive, it was like $5 or something. I mean, that's it was amazing. So, but um, I, you know, I thought it would be kind of an interesting experiment to wear the thing on the plane. I was also a little bit freaked out by the whole bowl thing because I had a friend at the time who was really involved in, um, she was obsessed with it and she would call me and text me constantly and be like, someone just died of Ebola. And she was like really freaking out. they got it on the plane yeah, yeah. you're going So on. she was like telling me these horrible, you know, stories and everything. And then I started getting paranoid and I was like, oh God, you know, I have to fly on this plane and like, I don't like flying anyway. And maybe I'll just wear a, a suit and it'll be interesting. I wrote on the suit like a, you know, to donate money to Doctors Without Borders and to wash your hands and all this stuff. And um, PSAs. people were pretty nice. People were like, a lot of people came up to me and were like, why are you wearing this and what's this about and you know I'm an artist and I like to uh, to to pique people's interest and and stay uh, keep myself uh, occupied so it was a it was a fun thing to do there was there did happen to be weirdly um, there was another comedian who happened to be on the plane oh, wow. yeah it was really weird and she got so pissed like what? she was the because I don't know because she didn't think of it first I don't know but like she, of all the people she was the only one who was like I oh, hate yeah, like she, of she, she like posted right? on Instagram. She like put pictures of me and was like, "Die! How could you do that?" It was pretty funny. Guess who's healthy? Guess who's healthy on the flip side of this? Look, you, you're here. Here I am. The other comedian died. No, she actually she, she got Ebola. Sadly, no, she she's doing good too. I, I, I but it was funny. That was kind of how we met. That's how big the comedy scene is in this. In this, yeah. there's like thousands of comedians, and sometimes they happen to be on the same plane. Going to LA. She, go, both going places. to LA. So, yeah. Um, how did you get in and out of it? Like, did you feel to go to the bathroom? Well, I went to the um, I went to the. It was basically like a onesie. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just like zipped oh, right down, down, and okay. you could just kind of skimmy out of it, shimmy out. But um, I didn't put it on going through security because I knew security would be. Of course, they'll be like, so yeah, just, you're not getting on. Yeah, you're not even coming in. I just took it through, and then once I got on the other side, I put it on in the bathroom. And the first person I saw was this like beautiful dark-haired woman who was like. <laughs> you look amazing. And I was like, I'm in New York. This is New York. You know, I must be a JFK. And she was really cool. And it turned out she used to be a fashion store owner in the Lower East Side. And I was like, and we are going to be, and now we're best friends. And yeah, it was, it was awesome. And they have hazmat suits 2015 walking the runway. <laughs> Actually, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I, I was surprised that it didn't get more into the, you know, the fashion 
more of a little. Were you warm on the plane? I feel like I also, was for the first time ever. I was warm on the plane. You for the see, first time so ever. there is a very like good reason to wear those. I mean, I would wear it just again just to stay warm. It was really really great. And it's only five dollars on Amazon. Screw giving them ten dollars for a blanket. What, what do you, you say? A Home Depot, oh, Home yep. Depot. Are you looking them up right now? Can, can we get some delivered over here? <laughs> We're going to end the show. It's really cold. You know what? I need like it a is body freezing. or something going around the city. And they, they're really, they would be great for winter, for the winter months. Yeah, they would, right? Really. Mm -hmm. They're not super heavy. They're very light, but they just kind of like, they, yeah, they just sort of snuggle you in. You know, you can is put it, you can put too, it right over it? everything. Yeah, they have hoods. You can just put it right over everything and just. But you can wear your shoes in them too. Like it's a whole. You can wear your shoes or boots or yeah. I mean, it's not really like a. It's not. Re the, what I wore was not an official hazmat suit. It was just kind of hazmat e. It was hazmat -y. hazmat esque. It was yeah. the sister of the hazmat suit. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. It was um, the hers mat. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you. And did you have? Did it have a face plate? I, um, I did not there. have a face plate, but I had. What funny? I took this like workshop and I met this woman who. Her, she sells those visors oh, yes, that yes. are like the plastic surgery visors. And I was like fascinated with this thing. And she was like, here, you can have, we traded. I traded her some of my, I make underwear with my song, um, work, like my lyrics. song, my song lyrics yes. on them. And so I, I, I traded her three pairs of my song lyric underwear for one of the face va visors. Great trade. <laughs> and so I had this, I have this great face visor that's like, insane looking and it awesome. was a, it matched perfectly with the has suit. <laughs> Jessica, I'm, you're so I'm just I'm just I'm just not afraid of life, you know? Oh well um they are on my website, jessicadelfino.com. I have them on Etsy and eBay. It my my store name is Den of Delfino. Den of Delfino. Yeah. And I, I sell it. I sell the underwear, I sell my CDs and in the wintertime I make Christmas ornaments out of tampons. <laughs> Um, which are dual purpose. Which are a hit. I love. Uh, yeah, they're not used. If you are donating tampon, no. Japan, she's Yeah. Oh, I've, I would love to get my. I heard in Japan they have the you know the booth things where you can buy underwear in the vending machines. Are yeah. You yeah. I mean, I've seen shoes, but under okay. Doesn't that sound cool? We need those, right? One, one thing, know, I, one thing I thought would be super fun, though, would be to get a vending machine h here in New York and put my underwear in it, like in you the should. Lower East Side somewhere, and just kind of see what happens, see if anyone buys them or whatever. I think that's a great like idea. Like drunk girls being like, oh, my God, I just started my period. I have to go to the underwear vending machine or, like, whatever. I'm, I'm here from New Jersey. I'm stuck. It's 2 in the morning. I need I don't know what, why you would need a pair of underwear from a vending machine. Sometimes you're running out and you leave them behind. It's happened. Not, not to me, of course. I've heard stories. I mean, they're selling. Yes. They, you got to go buy a pair. You yeah, never sometimes know. Sometimes you just have to buy a pair of underwear. Sometimes you just need a pair of underwear. So, so. I think that, you know, moving forward, um, underwear vending machines throughout the city would actually, de Blasio, that would actually be. Let's do this, de Blasio. Yeah. Why don't How do we, we get to him? Yeah. <laughs> we have a direct channel to him. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, there'll be a couple pairs of men in their men's underwear in there too. We don't want to be. I like, do. I have. I started making men's underwear that also have the same lyrics on them because. My pussy is magic. Yeah, like yeah. Right. Because the because I because the gays and I Why get not? along. We do, and you know, for a guy to have my pussy is magic underwear, I think is kind of a it's cute thing. It's cute. You it know, is. it's 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 like it, it shows his. Grandma, toughness. what size are you? Just kidding. <laughs> I have you large know. ones too. I have big. I have big Granny ones. And small. I have everything. Yeah, thongs. Mm -hmm. You got that well bikini. Out. Yep. Yeah. I got them all. Boy got shorts. Them. Boy shorts. Yep. I'm in. Got them all. Some of them, the best sellers say, "I love my vagina and my pussy is magic." Those are. The... I would definitely think. I also have another new pair I just started putting out that says, "Don't rape me," which oh, I love. Oh, that like. is perfect. <laughs> yeah. Those are good. That's... All right. So the vending machine, we're getting that. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is you recently did um, a segment where you went and you were giving men the opportunity to take dick pics. Oh, yeah. You know, like, <laughs> be, I thought that was brilliant. Thank you. It was fun. It was a little reverse, um, you know, sexism. It was a lot of, it was a hoot. Basically, we set up a, um, a dick pic photo booth in Gramercy Park that I, that I made myself. Private for your privates. Yep. 
Private for your privates, exactly. And then we had some of the girls, um, it, some of my friends who were comedians, went around and asked different guys if they would be willing to go into the dick pic booth and take pictures of their own dicks and share them with our viewers. And uh, uh, we, we, well, we asked like probably 30 or 40 people, and of that amount, we got two. So, but we, at least we got some. That just tells me that they're just much more comfortable sending them to random girls in the privacy. In pri of exactly, home exactly. Than doing it out in the middle, which is crazy. Because do you know how many times somebody has pulled their dick out? But you know what I, it also tells. You know what it also what? tells Maybe us though the on the subway. Yeah. You know what else it tells me though, Stephanie? It tells me something very interesting because when men heckle women, right? When they're like, hey, baby, like, do you want to be my girlfriend? Or like, whatever they say, I don't know. Yes, yes like, I do. Yes. Yeah, so you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm making, keeping it classy here. But when they say that, right, they do that because they're playing the numbers game, right? One, some girl is going to be like, oh, I got nothing to do from two to three or whatever, right, you know? Right, right. So like, um, so, I, so you, that being, you know, taken into consideration. You actually made it convenient for them. We, well, we did a numbers game with these guys. And what we determined is about two out of every 40 people <laughs> responds, right? So th that's why the guys do the street harassing. I think that um, you could do that again in different parts of the city. You might get a different reaction. And maybe when it's warmer, I think that's also another Yes, one. yeah, yeah, when it's warmer. Because <laughs> we know how it is when it's cold. It's right, right, right. Too. Exactly. Get it together. But exactly. I love that. I love that. It was fun. Um, and so that's on YouTube on my channel. Yes. YouTube.com, Jess Delfino. Do you have questions? Yeah, check in on the, uh, interwebs? Yes, we're going to check in because I'm sure. Okay. Oh, Slash. Yeah, she says, what's up here from Ohio? And show us your penis. <laughs> <laughs> I think actually, so for the men panties, because we can call them men panties, right? Man panties, yeah. Man My penis is magic, right? We can My penis, penis is magic, yeah. Magic. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. yeah. Could. Mangina. Mangina. My mangina is magic. Or like magic wand. Magic wand. Magic Let me wand. show you my magic wand. I don't know. Something. <laughs> I She's have to write. On it. I have She's to write working. a song about it. That's you know. I know. And then it goes into the. And machine. then it goes onto the underwear. Yeah. So it starts as life as a song, and then it turns into underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Which is how life should actually. Yeah. Be. Exactly. Exactly. So, we have a couple questions. Okay. Because you, really, you guys, she is a total powerhouse. It's actually funny. I think we were also destined to meet because I was in Reverend Billy's What Would Jesus Buy movie, mm -hmm. and Jessica was actually the one that um, wrote the carols that we sang. I did. I wrote movie. the songs. Yeah. And we just did this really fun gig over Christmas for Consumer Reports. Can we talk about them? Yeah. Can we say something? Yeah, yeah I think Consumer so. Reports rocks. Um, yeah. She wrote a bunch of the uh, great carols for them as well that we got to sing around the city. That was, was very really fun. Fun gig to go to like all the iconic spots mm -hmm. in the city during the Christmas during the, yeah, season the when season. it was like at the you know tourist peak. It was a lot of fun. Do you know how many underwears you would have sold if those vending machines had been out at that I time? I know, I know. Like, I, I also... Shorts, like, I was going to get you something there, but you know what? These panties are much better. I was thinking of doing something really funny where I got, like, a trench coat, and I, like, put, <gasps> yes. you know, the, them in the side, and was like, you want to pair underwear? But, like, I didn't, I didn't get around to it. <laughs> like, old school New York, you know. But anyway, yeah, back. so that was a super fun gig for us. And Stephanie, I'm so glad that you were that doing it. Um, and it was great. Like, just basically a bunch of us... Hanging out and singing together for five days. Yes. And then the holiday choir, Gay Apparel, which were always available for gigs anywhere yes. in the world. Uh -huh. Just get us there. We'll mm -hmm. come and sing at your holiday party. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we everything. have a great crew. We have a beautiful choir. We dress in red and black. We're we get beautiful. We get paid cannolis. <laughs> that was we sang wonderful. in Little Italy. We did. Um, I, I think it was Christmas Eve Eve, which was super fun. We sang around Little Italy yes. in different Italian yeah. restaurants, and they, you know, gave us tips the and cannolis. Were really awesome. And then afterwards, we went to my the friend's show at the Slipper Room and sang on stage with God Gilbert Godfrey. Gilbert Godfrey. So that I was, was pretty like, fun. How do you end up like? <laughs> can I share these lyrics with you, Gilbert? Yeah, it was, it was a fun, fun uh, night. That was actually that was a great night. Yeah. Um, so she just, she does so much. Like, I don't even, do you sleep? You don't sleep, right? Oh, I sleep. I get eight hours every night. I'm <laughs> dedicated to my eight hours. Awesome. Mm -hmm. That's what but I, I, I like to stay busy. You know, when I'm in, I do to-do lists. I like make to-do lists and stick to them and go through them. I love crossing off my, I love, my, crossing off. I know, I love right? it. I'm it's just like, like da, da. it's so satisfying. It is. I sometimes like do something and then I'm like, oh, it wasn't on the list, but I put it on the list. Yeah. So, so you can cross it off. off. I do oh that God. too. <laughs> I love 
that. Oh God, it feels so, so good. It's, I also have a, a mission and the, a, you know, a goal is to have at least as much or more money than Bon Jovi someday. So, you know, I want to, I, great I'm not going to get there by sitting on my butt twiddling my thumbs. You know what I mean? So that's true. I yeah. hear you girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Well, getting into your creative process, because you are involved in so many different things. So mm -hmm. we're going to like pick your brain. We want to uh, know your secrets. <laughs> so we can do what you do. Mm -hmm. um, so pick a number, 1 through 18. OK, I would take probably 9. What is your most persistent distraction? The internet. <gasps> yeah. The internet the hotel is hotel California, right? It now. really is a monster. It gets, it really throws a monkey wrench into my focus. So sometimes I, I have a program where I actually can turn off the internet and it stays. Off. And you're not, you can't use it. You even if you want to, even if you try, you have to restart Did you get your, your own computer. Parental control or something. Like yeah, that? yeah. I put my own parental controls <laughs> nice. on my uh, on my computer. Yeah. That's awesome. That was the second part of the question. How do you keep it in check? You yeah. put your own controls on it. I also just kind of beat myself up, you know, Italian guilt style. Like, Delfino, you're not going to have as much money as Bon Jovi if you're <laughs> hanging out on, you know, I, I don't know. On Facebook in Hotel yeah. California, right? But it's even worse than Facebook. Like, I get stuck in these K-holes where I read, you know, like well, Huffington Post. Oh, and like, I'm on this website now that I love called Quora. I think it's, I don't even know how to pronounce it. I think it's called Quora, Q-U-O-R-A. And it's questions that anybody can answer. So like, for example, someone might be like, how does Ryan Gosling stay so hot? You know? And then Ryan Gosling answers it. He's like, well, I use Kiehl's and then I yeah. take a shower every day. Or like, whatever, you know? But it's just kind of, it's just really cool website where anyone you know like I, I was looking for like a contact to this like website and I went on there and like the person who like owns the website was like oh this is how you get in touch with us you know it's just it's very yeah it's it neat. is it is like it's a k-hole it's like once you get on I do that too I start somebody will put like an interesting article up about like you know the aliens are here or something that I'm interested in yeah and then like I just it's like then and the, the news bottom, I mean more I, links to more articles even just the news like reading the yes. Google News in the morning is you know this like oh no and then down here and then down here and then down oh shoot and then I'm not and even like reading the news anymore I'm like you know reading a muffin recipe and I'm like how did that happen you know I know I came here to look up rabbits or something yeah <laughs> Yes, I bet. I bet. We need to fight it. No, we need to find out what they're doing and steal their tricks. That's true. Yeah. We're going to find out. Mm -hmm. and we're, gonna, we're not putting that in the vending machine. Nope. For sure. Pick another number. How about um, 14? Okay, I just have to say that both times when I was looking at the cards, you picked both of the numbers I just happened to be looking at. It's because I'm psychic. Can you read my mind? She can read my mind, you guys. Um, what do you do to slow down? I leave town. Yeah, I get out. My husband and I just bought a car. That's amazing. And it's the first new car that I've ever, we've ever had. And uh, we bought it specifically with the, you know, we, we bought it for his work actually, but I, I okayed it because <laughs> you know everything's going to go through me. That's right. <laughs> um, but I okayed it because I want, I love the idea of us being able to split, to split skis. You know, like for New Year's, um, last year we went to Iceland, which was great. So for New Year's this year we went to Salem, Salem. Massachusetts. And every, at least once a, one weekend a month, I just, I split. You know, I go to Philly gotcha. or Maryland where my family is, or I go to, you know, Maine where I grew up, or I just even go for a weekend trip to see like a relative in yeah. New Jersey or something, you know, just to get out. out of here. Yeah. I feel like as a New Yorker, like that is quintessential to our survival here is having to get out. Yeah. And, and you need to know, yeah. you need to know to do that. Yes. You know, and you have to, that's the other thing. Cause it's like a million, like I love it here. I do love it here so much, but I'm lucky that I do have the opportunity to get out because then I remember, oh yeah, I do love it so much here. We but gotta get out of this place. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but yeah. it's like, I feel like you, the only way to retain your sanity is to leave. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you have to also just, you know, I mean, if you can't leave all the time, uh, you know, some people you have a job or whatever, but I used to work every day. I used to work every single day. And then I said to myself, you know, most people who have a nine to five job, basically as an artist, I, in order to make ends meet, I just, I work all the time because I can never say no, because if I do, then, you know, who knows? Yeah, I'm just hustling. So, but I started to formate my working, you know, life to resemble a job. Nice. So now I work from like 10 to six or 10 to seven and 
then I have weekends and I do stuff on the weekends. Like I'm here, you know, or I go, I, sometimes I pick up a little extra work, but usually I keep things light on the weekend on Saturday and Sunday and Monday through Friday. I just like bust my ass. That's the way to do it. Yeah. That's That's good. So one more question. These are my own personal questions. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Is there one that you really wanted to ask that is there one that's like really that you're like, oh, I hope she picks number number four or well, whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> pay no attention to the referee in the back. Um, this is actually this is like you know the question I like asking everyone is okay. that if you were a spice, what would you be? <laughs> Gee, that's a tough one. I mean, is olive oil considered a spice? Uh, I, I love olive oil. I put it on everything. Um, I'm Italian. I also, I, maybe I'd be powdered Infused? cheese. Oh, you know what I'd be here? How I don't. You say powdered yeah, cheese? Yeah, like powdered cheese, maybe. This like is, that you put in craft macaroni? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not a spice, I don't think, but this is what I'd be. I'd be nutritional yeast, because that shit is good on fucking everything. <laughs> it's good on popcorn. It makes you rise. It's, yeah, it's like it wakes you up, wakes it you, gives oh. you, it's good for you. Yeah, I'd probably be nutritional yeast. So if you were nutritional yeast, would you also have to come with like. A like kit, a yeah. <laughs> a kit a yeast infection There's kit. There's actually a pill you can take for that. Um, you know, as a woman who has had many, many yeast infections over the years, um, because and I'm very, because I'm super sexually active, you guys, just like banging like crazy. That's why your husband isn't here. Um, <laughs> He's like taking a rest. <laughs> no, um, but when I was younger in Maine and, and just like growing up, there was nothing to do there except like bang all the time. So Did I. You have pot there? Yeah, that's what we did. We smoked pot and banged all the time. And um, I, I got Why very, it wasn't bad, but I got a lot of yeast infections. <laughs> and, and, um, and, and, but even worse than the yeast infection, which is like, you know, that's just a part of life, is the UTI. Yes. The urinary tract infections are way worse, you guys. And I, what I did was I learned, I taught myself how to will, will myself out of them. And Can you share that with us? Yeah, basically what you do is, you know, because when you, you guys pay attention, when you get it, you, you get, you pay attention because you can share this with your lady friends That's and right. they'll be very happy to hear this. Um, so when you get a urinary tract infection, what it is, is it's a bacteria kind of gets into your Bang. urination area yes. and it hurts like the devil. It hurts so, so it's bad. And you, you like try to pee, but you can't, you're like Tom Cruise and like, or Tom Hanks and <laughs> in the green mile or whatever. And yeah. it's, and it's a, hor- it's yes. a horrible feeling. But, um, so then you have to go to the doctor and you have to get a prescription for some yeah. kind of penicillin to knock it out. And in addition to that, you have to get, um, this red pill that turns your pee orange yeah, your orange. and, so um, and that is a, that it's numbs normal. your bladder. So now what I have determined was that if I drank like the, from the second I started to feel that horrible feeling of like, oh no, I think I have a UTI. You drink like a gallon of water. Like you drink as much water as you can for the whole day. And you, so that you're peeing, like every time every you time stand up, you have to, you sit back <laughs> down and pee again. Like every time you just pee and you're peeing, you're peeing, you're peeing. But the trick is you take a peridium, which is the red pills that oh, you get yeah, at Rite yeah, Aid. Yeah. And then that turns your pee orange so it doesn't hurt. And you just you pee it out, guys. You pee it out. Clear and you don't, out. you don't have to go to the doctor. You don't have to get penicillin. All penicillin does is makes your immune system, you know, weaker event over yeah. time and blah, blah, blah. And it's really, you're just supporting the health uh, industry complex. And You just put a total thorn in the pharmaceutical industry. Good. I hope I cost them millions of dollars in urinary tract right medicine. <laughs> Nutritional yeast, UTIs solved. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we're good. And we're mm-hmm. dinging. Yep. <laughs> So Jessica, can you will you do another set for yeah, us? Yeah, sure. Some more songs yeah, for us. Yeah, I have some songs. Awesome. Do you? Should I move this? Or no, leave this? no, everything's good. I'm just gonna play these songs right here. Okay. Awesome. So, thank you. Woo-hoo. Thank you very much. This is so fun. I'd like to get to know the audience a little. Can I do that? Um, because there are some very interesting... What's so cool about New York? One of the things I love about the city is everybody. Everybody is interesting. Everyone. I mean, in order to move here or even grow up here. You know, you've, you've got to kind of have some something going on. And everyone has a story. And I used to think I was pretty interesting. You know, I used to be like, yeah, like I, I came from Maine and I've got six sisters and we, we all have different dads pretty much. And like, it's a very cool, s- s- weird scenario. And then I meet people who are just like, their stories like blow me away. And I'm like, I am just, a, just another person. But like, everyone's really interesting. And um, so just out of curiosity, like, you know, 
What, what's up with you guys? Like, ma'am, for example, are you, are you a regular viewer to the show? Ma'am in the middle? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you, not that often, but sometimes? What, what's your, what do you do for fun? What's your hobby is, or do you have like a, any interests that? Okay. What kind of dancing? Ball, you ballroom dance? That's amazing. Okay, so like I, I can't dance. I, when I try to dance, I, people like try, ask me if I'm okay and try to like get me help. <laughs> like I'm, yeah, someone's, people are, I, I so do you, did you, um, do you have like a dancing partner? Okay, all right. Did you take classes or are you just naturally good on your feet? Are you, what's your background, your, your, your ethnic background? Your what? Your ethnic background is that you're a nurse? Yeah, like are you Spanish, Filipino? Okay, and, and dancing is like a pretty big part of the sort of, you know, Hispanic kind of culture, right, would you say? Is, wait, is Filipino, is that Hispanic? No, that's Asian. Okay, yeah, so, did you say South Asian? I'm American, so my geography is like really fucked. I'm just, <laughs> you should know that. Um, so um, Filipino, so you're from Australia. Okay, great. Um, so what are, what are kangaroos like? Um, <laughs> have you ever danced with a kangaroo? Um, uh, so, so did you know that you wanted to be a dancer from a very young age? Not really, it's just a happy It's just, ha it's, it's a fun thing that makes you happy? That, what's that like, being happy? Um, I, I want to try that sometime. Anyone else, any, dan any other dancers in the room? Any other people who love to dance? I have a friend who's always like, I just want to go dancing. And I'm like, you, are you like that? Are you the one? You're the one? I'm like, can we pick something that you don't have to like, have balance for to do properly? <laughs> can I? Um, I'm a bad dancer is what I'm trying to say. I'm very bad at dancing. Um, anyone like have any pets? Any pets in the room? Any pets? What do you have? What kind of pet do you have? A snake and a cat. A snake and a cat? Holy crap. That's like, that's like a restaurant name. That's like a hipster, like the snake and the cat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> totally. The snake and the cat. And um, which one did you get first? The snake. Okay. And then you were like, this snake is not cuddly. Really? Yeah. You cuddle with the snake? It likes to wrap itself around you. So that's, it neck, I was going to say, yeah, that's not cuddling. It's trying to kill you. You realize it's trying, it's trying to take your life. No. Like, he's getting defensive. He's like, you shut up. My snake loves me, okay? You don't know my snake. You shut up. You've never met Cyclops. What's your snake's name? <laughs> Trial pal. Trial pal. Trial pal. Because I asked my three-year-old son at the time, "What do you want to be called a snake?" And he said, "Trial pal." And I said, "What?" And he said, "Trial pal." And finally, I'm like, "What does that mean?" He goes, "Nothing." So your child is going to be one of those people who like ruins the world because he gets everything he wants from daddy. Yeah. Great. Thanks a lot. Yeah, it's technically his snake. Oh, so his okay. Name. All right. Yeah. Well, you said you have, but you pay the bills, so it's kind of like it's your snake too. I pay the bills. And here's 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 the mess. Okay. Meanwhile, I'm going to Petland Discounts and buying mice for the snake. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't feed the snake, the snake the mice that are in the loft. Now that's very interesting, right? Because like in New York, a lot of people have mice in their apartment. That's another thing about living in New York that they don't really tell you, like in the New York handbook, when you're like, I want to move to New York and be a star. No one's like, oh, by the way, you're going to be living with mice. Yeah. It's going to happen. I hope you like water bugs. Yeah, I hope you like mice and giant insects the size of your face because they have those there and they come free with every apartment you know now wouldn't that be cool we got to twist it right you guys we got to make it so that um so that mice and and bugs start being like a real estate um what's it called like a like a perk yeah an amenity exactly yeah yeah free pets 
Yeah, we got to figure out how to do that so that all of us basically, our, our value, our real estate value goes up. Yeah. Like my apartment just went from being worth, you know, I don't know, like $300,000 to like 800,000. Boom. Just like that. Cause I got my, sp so, um, that's interesting. No one ever has ha said they have a snake because I ask people a lot, like, you know, what kind of pets they have. Most people say they have a cat or a dog. Does anyone else have an unusual pet besides a snake? Unusual pet otters or foxes or squirrels or pigeons or bees? Okay. All right. So you're, you're like, um, you're like uh, Snow White or something. <laughs> Do you go back with like a basket of bread and just are like, here you go, my little friends? And I put my, you know, my uh, robe on me in the morning. Mm. That's. Actually, I leave nuts. You, I leave nuts outside. Peanuts. So um, I don't have any pets. I, I mean, I, I, I have one pet. I have, I have a cat. I have one cat, as I mentioned before. Her name is Miss Puss. And um, cats are cats are cool. Does anyone have cats? We have a cat. You have, oh yeah, you have a cat. You have one cat. Oh, you have, you have two cats? Well, one's not mine, but yeah, we all live in the same apartment together. Okay, so one cat's yours, the snake is your son's, technically, and then the other cat is your girlfriend, so you each kind of have a you pet. Have yes. So, two cats is like, that's it, right? No more cats, right? And does anyone else have two cats? Two cats, like that's, that's it. You can't go three, because after three comes 16. That's the next... Yeah. That's the cat. That's, I don't know if you guys know how to count cat, but it goes one, two, three, 16. That's how you count cat. And you have to be careful because it's a very slippery slope. It really is. It really is. Um, anyone do anal? Anyone in here do anal? Anyone do? Okay. All right. One nice, honest man in the back and a very honest gentleman. Thank you guys for being honest. It's always the guys who's like, yeah, I do anal. Woo! Um, I've, I never did anal, um, until recently. I was saving it for my wedding night. Um, <laughs> so you can't show up full hold, you know? <laughs> you can't show up, you gotta have a little vacancy at the inn, you know what I'm talking about? Or the guys get all, like, defensive. They're like, ooh, well, where's Mr. Charlie gonna go? It's gonna be the first time that they went there, or, like, whatever, so. So I left my, um, I left my butt, um, a virgin until I got married um, and it was really uh, it was a, a beautiful night but I'm not going to talk about that um, what I'm going to talk about is how we all do anal every night every day all day mm -hmm. and I'm going to explain in the form of song well life isn't always easy for me there are so many things that give me stress Having trouble paying my bills and oh my apartment's a mess And I don't understand why these bills are so high and my paychecks are so low But every time I turn around life's stealing me another blow Life keeps fucking me in the ass It's fucking me in the ass And I know life's having a great time But I'm not really into ass sex Life's got an anal fixation But doesn't use enough lubrication Life keeps fucking me It's fucking me in the ass Hola Life's always got the tip in Ready to push all the way I guess that life thought that I'd get into it If it did it to me every day Life said we were gonna do it Doggy style said it with a little grin when I got down on all fours, you know, life just stuck it in. Life keeps fucking me in the ass. It's fucking me in the ass. And you know, life's having a great time. Ain't no fucking a girl who graduated at the top of her class. That didn't happen. Life's got an anal desire. And wants to light my ass on fire. Life keeps fucking me. It's fucking me in the ass. Life keeps fucking me. It's fucking me in the hay, 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 ow, ow, no, I said no, wrong, ho, thank you.
you, Stephanie. Thank you guys so much for having me. Enjoy the rest of your lovely evening. Well, you're going to stay up here. Oh, we're going to do the, our song should, together? We should do a song. Okay, let's do a song together. Let's do some song. Hey, I have an idea. Yeah? Um, can you grab that stand and bring it closer? I wrote, some, I wrote a couple notes down. I absolutely can. What if we do, uh, what, if, what if we... Let's take it back, maybe. Yeah, let's yeah, let's kick it back to like the, back. the 80s or something. Like maybe uh Love it. something like uh
for coming out once again, Jessica Delfino. Come on, let's give her the a The human run. jukebox. The human jukebox. The human juke. Um, I want to thank a bunch of people. So I want to thank Tanya and Taryn. Thank you so much for the joint for having us here. Um, thank you all for coming. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Edgardo. Thank you, Micah, my crew. And um, if you guys always check out uh, MsStephanie'sHouse.com, you can always find recipes. You can find information about all the artists that have come on the show, like the amazing Jessica. And um, all the past um, shows that we've done, they're online as well. We have Facebook page, Twitter page, Instagram. What else do we have? We have everything. We have everything that everybody has nowadays, including my grandma. So check us out. We'll be back February 8th. And um, we look forward to seeing you then. So everybody have a great night. Woo! Take your pants off. Go ride the subway. <laughs> Happy 2015.